Thank you for having me. I'm going to tell you my story. Uh, I was, there I was in college, studying astronomy and physics with high hopes of becoming the best high school science teacher in the world, when a friend hands me a book by New York City public school teacher John Taylor Gatto. Gatto had taught some of the best and worst schools in Manhattan for almost 30 years. He won multiple Teacher of the Year awards for taking kids out of the classrooms and putting them into the communities in innovative ways. And then he quit. The first line in Gatto's book that I read was, I've noticed a fascinating phenomenon in my 25 years of teaching, that schools and schooling are increasingly irrelevant to the great enterprises of the planet. No one believes anymore that scientists are trained in science classes, or politicians in civics classes, or poets in English classes. The truth is that schools don't really teach anything except how to obey orders. Well, that was a shock to me. How could I teach high school science if this was true? I googled Gatto's name, and within a few days, I discovered an even bigger shock, which was something called unschooling. Apparently, there were teens and their parents who took this kind of advice seriously, stopped going to school entirely, and became unschoolers. And apparently, these unschoolers didn't fail in life, but they actually thrived. So that was it for me. I was hooked. I designed a major to study this stuff full time, started tracking down every unschooler I could find, and uh, now I lead international trips for them. So that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to start with the definition of unschooling. Unschooling is full-time self-directed learning. Uh, everyone here has done self-directed learning before, maybe when working on a really interesting project with your friends or taking an elective class or doing personal reading. Um, it's when you're learning for the sake of learning. And the unschooling mindset asks, why not do this more often? Why not do this full time? I'm going to tell you about three unschoolers I know who illustrate what full time self directed learning can look like. The first is Jenny, um, Jenny from Wichita, Kansas. At age 15, in her freshman year of school, Jenny was completely stressed out by school. She was bored by school, and she told me it gave her a poor return on investment. She felt like the time she invested there just didn't give her what she needed. And what she needed was time to explore her interests in birds, animals, and becoming a veterinarian. Jenny read a book about unschooling. She stopped going to high school completely. And she started doing something that would probably make a few college preparatory parents cringe, which is she spent long hours online on the forums for bird owners. And she would take the questions that bird owners posted on these forums, go Google the answers, and then post them back. She was not a very experienced bird owner herself, but she became one. The next thing that Jenny did was when her fancy mice got sick, she and her mom went to Wichita, Kansas's only exotic animal clinic, and she hit it off with the sole veterinarian who works there. And soon Jenny became the intern for the exotic animal clinic of Wichita, Kansas. And she would spend late nights working with the vet, dissecting euthanized animals, helping with x-rays. Eventually the vet asked her to start working in the front, helping out by scheduling and selling feed and talking with customers. And when Jenny turned 16, the vet gave her the keys to the clinic and a weekly paycheck that she didn't ask for. Jenny also got to volunteer at the local county zoo, caring for over 60 species of birds. And she was a performing violinist. She taught violin lessons, planted her own gardens, went on long-distance bike rides. Pretty sweet life. Next person I'd like to tell you about is Jonah from central Massachusetts. At age 12, around seventh grade, Jonah was completely miserable in school. He didn't have any interests, and he was getting into trouble all the time. With the help of a local homeschooling support center, he left school, and he started taking classes and workshops to the center, trying to figure out what he was interested in. At age 15, he said, I'm very interested in chemistry. And he went to the closest big university, the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, and he went to the, a uh, freshman chemistry class, and he walked up to the professor, and he said, hi, my name is Jonah. I'm really interested in learning this chemistry stuff. I'm not able to audit this class. Can I please just sit in on this class, take the assignments, do the quizzes, just because I'm curious in it. The professor said, of course you can. How many professors get you know, students coming up to their chemistry class saying, please, please, can I sit in on your chemistry class and do all the assignments? Very few. Everyone's doing it for the prerequisites. So Jonah took the class, and he didn't get college credit for it, but he did get a letter of recommendation from the professor that said, if you'd like to enroll in the next level of chemistry here at Amherst, then you've done the prerequisites. And they're also good friends now. Jonah is currently doing a geology class in this similar fashion. He's taking multiple community college classes, and he's an avid rock climber. 
The third person is Ben on the left from Seattle. Ben never went to school. He's 17 now. His parents, one of whom was a public school teacher, decided just not to put him in school. He must be completely messed up, right? No. Currently, Ben builds longboards and bass guitars from hand by scratch. You know what I mean. He was uh, recently in a longboard shop in Seattle showing off his, his recent, recently built board. And he was shown to the owners because they had helped him find the materials. And another person was there who was interested in Ben's boards. It was a representative from a premium board shop in British Columbia. And they said, the representative said, Ben, your boards look really good. Are you interested in building long boards in the future? And Ben said, yes, but I'm doing it right now. He invited Ben to come up and tour the board shop and meet the pro board builders up in British Columbia. He said there are very few pro long board builders to be found, and we're always looking for new talent. When Ben is not building stuff by hand, he's a long distance runner. He hangs out with a wonderful group of North Seattle teen unschoolers, and he's taking fire service technology classes. Excuse me. Uh, Jenny, Jonah, and Ben are each examples of what teens who don't thrive in traditional high school can accomplish with the unschooling mindset. But unschooling, while it's rapidly growing, is widely misunderstood. So I'm going to make a few key points about unschooling. The first one is, yes, it's legal. That's because unschooling falls under the umbrella of homeschooling, which is legal in all 50 states. And some states make it easier for you. Some states make it more difficult. But you can do it anywhere, and increasingly abroad. Next note, no, it's not the same thing as homeschooling. Lots of times when we hear the word homeschooling, we think school at home which is not an innovative educational model. It is taking school and doing it at home. Unschooling is about self-directed learning. You start with the student's interests, passions, curiosities, and you go from there. You find the resources to answer those. And if that sounds like a recipe for narrow-mindedness to you, it's not. All the teenagers I know who unschool are exposed. They're rounded. They know about stuff that happened in history. I largely thank the internet for this. Yes, they're socialized. You can become socialized without school. Here was my introduction to socialized teenage unschoolers, not back to school camp, a place where over 100 of these teenagers congregate every year. And uh, I realized that homeschoolers are positively socialized most of the time, which means they're respectful, they're inclusive of diversity, and there's not an arbitrary power hierarchy between the adults and the teenagers. And as a mentor and tutor for unschooling teens, that's big to me because I can talk to them as young adults. Next, no, they're not all geniuses. There's not some minimum IQ that you need to get into the unschooling club. Um, if you ask the teenagers who were previously in school, and now they're unschoolers, what they were like in school, they, were, they said, man, I was just bored. I didn't have any interests. I was listless. Um, you know, I had family problems. And then they start unschooling, and after a few months of decompression, they're all of a sudden, they're passionate. They have interests. Oh, they're doing all sorts of incredible things. It's because unschooling gave them that chance. Um, there's no minimum IQ. You just need the uh, courage to work outside the system. Yes, they get jobs without a diploma. Uh, I think Jenny and Ben are good examples of how this can happen. By doing internships, apprenticeships, by doing extensive personal practice and independent study, you can get the background experience uh, necessary to get a decent job. And if you're wondering if uh, you can get rich without a high school diploma, maybe even filthy rich, uh, yes, you can. You can ask multimillionaire Whoopi Goldberg or billionaire Richard Branson or Liz Claiborne, Keith Richards, Frank Lloyd Wright. The list of high school dropouts goes on and on. We're not even talking about those local billionaire college dropouts, OK? Oh, and yes, they get into college. This is especially interesting interesting for me because I find that lots of people who don't enjoy high school go to it nonetheless because they think it's the only ticket into college. And that's not true. Let me walk you through a thought experiment to show you how someone without high school can get into a great college. Let's consider two fictional students based upon real people. Elmo, our model high schooler, and Alma, our model unschooler, who drops out in ninth grade. Let's say they're both competing for the last spot in a competitive college engineering program. Let's compare their credentials. 
And they take classes, almost doing four years of high school classes, heavy in the math and science, almost doing two semesters of community college classes, which, by the way, that's standard for unschoolers. If they're interested in going to college, they'll usually enroll in community college at age 15, 16, take some part-time classes, see if they're actually interested in college instead of assuming that they are, like so many of us do, I did. And then if they want to enroll, they've got some credits, they can get in pretty easily. Let's also imagine for the sake of argument they have the same GPA, Alma in high school classes, Alma in college classes, and they take similar standardized tests, which the college requires, and get similar scores. Alma knows that to get into a good college, you have to do extracurriculars, and so he goes to the local soup kitchen and puts in his hours. Alma, on the other hand, in stereotypical, quirky, unschooler fashion, decides to build a functional trebuchet, a medieval war machine. And I actually met an unschooler who built a functional trebuchet a few weeks ago. It was very satisfying. Um, to help learn how to build a medieval war machine, she goes to a young engineer summer seminar, the type offered at college campuses all across the states, and also creates a six-month internship, kind of like Jenny created an internship at the vet in, machine, in a machine tool shop. Um, and in her junior year of unschooling, she takes a few months off to go to Costa Rica, learn Spanish, volunteer, get a tan, you know. Elmo is in high school doing college prep. For the letters of recommendation, Elmo gets his from the usual sources, math teacher, physics teacher, guidance counselor, each of whom is writing letters of recommendation for 40 other people, whereas Alma gets slightly more personalized recommendations from her summer seminar director, internship supervisor, her favorite community college professor. And when they write that all-important personal essay, Elmo will probably write about his favorite physics lecture, his vague interest in engineering, and the soup kitchen experience, whereas Alma is going to write about her decision to leave school to better learn engineering, challenges faced in building a functional trebuchet, and her thoughts on technology in developing countries like Costa Rica. Now, I need to do a quick poll. Are there any college admissions officers in this crowd? No? Great. Let's imagine we are. Uh, who would you choose, Alma or Alma? Alma. I think Alma wins by a landslide, but why? She doesn't have a high school diploma. Oh, how could she possibly get into a good college? I thought that... Um, to get into a good college, we'll need, um, you need five things. You need intellectual passion. You need leadership. You need logical reasoning. You need the capacity for structured learning, which Alma shows by doing community college classes. And you need the background knowledge necessary for your course of study. These are required. A high school diploma is not. Jenny from Wichita got into Wichita State University doing a pre-vet biology major by doing her internships and her self-directed learning, packaging everything into a um, sort of a resume, a portfolio. And then she sent that in with one standardized test, the ACT, which she got a decent score on, not phenomenal, and she got in. But increasingly, when you get deeper into the unschooling mindset, you ask yourself, is college itself even necessary for everyone? Um, college, I don't need to tell you that college is expensive. And if you're not able to afford uh, the college that you want to go to, are there other ways that you can do college using self-directed learning? First, you need to ask, why am I going to college? There's a number of good reasons why we go to college. First is to build competency and employability. Next is to gain exposure to big ideas and great minds that you wouldn't have heard of otherwise, become rounded. Next, to live independently for the first time in your young adult life. Next, to meet smart people, be socially networked. Next, to have fun and go to parties. Yes, that's important. And finally, to bundle all this up into what economists call signaling, meaning, yes, I went through our culture's rite of passage before your college experience, and I'm sending a signal to the world that I'm an accomplished person. So my question is, can you do all of this without paying 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars a year for the privilege? What if, instead of going to college classes to build your competency and your resume, you got involved in high-level internships and apprenticeships, or you found a retired college professor in your area and learned from them? What if you started your own small businesses? What if you actually just did part-time work? Could you build competency that way? To gain exposure to the world of ideas, what if you spent a few hours on TED.com? What if you went to uh, uh, people in the industries that you are interested in and interviewed them. 
And what if you took advantage of all those free online webcasts from Berkeley, MIT, Stanford, with all their top professors just sitting there giving their best lectures online for free? Could you become exposed to the world of ideas? To live independently, could you just go on Craigslist and find an off-campus house in a college town and go there and live there with other college students or other young adults and have that young adult independent living experience for the cost of living, not the inflated cost of dorms? What if to meet other people, you've networked with your housemates and you did community service projects and volunteering and you got involved with extracurricular student groups? Could you meet other college-aged people? To have fun, can you just go to the college parties? They're not checking IDs at the doors here. Just walk. And finally, if you self-directed a four-year college experience, paying only perhaps five or $10,000 a year to do this, and you got connected with all these people, what kind of a signal would that send? I self-directed my college experience, and I saved money doing it. Maybe I earned money because I was working or I started my own business. I think it would send a powerful one. This is the unschooling mindset. It's the belief that by persistently following your passions, looking for hidden opportunities, and being comfortable as an outsider, you gain all the important skills in life, skills that a piece of paper from an institution can never give you. And the best part about it is no matter who you are, whether you're in high school, or you're a homeschooler, or you're a college student, or you're a working adult, you can apply this mindset right now by simply asking yourself, what are my deepest passions, interests, and long-term goals, and how can I do them full-time? Thank you.